What's up, NZers? Hi! And welcome back to another reaction video. And today we're going to do something pretty cool. It's about uh, the five reasons you shouldn't mess with the USA. Ooh. Ooh. But before we get into the reaction video, I just wanted to quickly give a huge shout out to all of our new patrons uh, who joined us over on Patreon. And if you guys are interested in joining as well, we have some exclusive content coming soon that we're planning and it might have to do with reactions. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Join if you want to see that sort of stuff. And yeah, we'll, get, we'll start off with giving a shout out. Link's down below. Link is down in the description if you want to join. And we'll give a huge shout out to uh, Philip Uriguez and Craig Hirschfeld. Also, apologies if we mess up these names. We're sorry, but uh, we're doing our best. We're going to have a, a turn of saying your names each. Yep. A huge thank you to Harbour Cat and A. Emmanuel Jensen. And also, Oskin Ogitsky and Kathy D. John Myers. And Bart Watson and Bruce Nelson. You guys, you guys are legends. You guys are awesome. So thank you. You guys joined the Hall of Fame. Yes. And uh, yeah, so we have we'll some. We'll see you over there. Yeah, we have some awesome content planned for you guys. So stay tuned for that. We're still in the planning stages. And we need to get our head around how it all works, eh? Yeah, yeah. We just we're, we're just yeah figuring out how it works. But once we've got it down, uh, then yeah, you guys will definitely be rewarded for that. So thank you again, and let's get straight to the reaction. Right. The collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s left the United States as the sole superpower in the world, and it's never looked back. In all aspects of the world, the United States is indeed a superpower, especially when it comes to its military might, which is unsurpassable in its strength, technological superiority, operational capabilities, and power projection across the globe. In this video, we'll take a look at the five top reasons why you wouldn't want to go against the U.S. military establishment. The United States Air Force is the strongest in the world, not only in the number of operational aircraft, but also in technological superiority. The country currently operates a total of over 15,000 military aircraft, combining all the branches wow. of the military service, including the U.S. And how, how many aircraft does New Zealand have? I know, like, do we have one? Fighter jets? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> so the US Army, yeah, the Coast Guard, and the US Marines. As of 2017, the US Air Force alone has a fleet of over 5,300 aircraft, 406 intercontinental ballistic missiles, Whoa. and 170 military satellites, greater than any other country in the That's world. That's enough for one for each the country. The USA <laughs> has the largest number of stealth aircraft designed to be silent killers wow. and are trackable so cool. by the radar defense systems of most countries in the world. Some of these stealth aircraft include air superiority fighters, such as the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, oh, heavy cool, bombers, right? such as the B-2 Spirit. Ooh. In fact, the United States pioneered this technology in the 1980s with the introduction of the F-117 Nighthawk stealth attack aircraft. Wow. Stealth aircraft right. are designed to avoid detection using a variety of technologies that reduce radar reflection from ground, sea, or air-based radar antennas, thereby like reducing plane. its radar cross-section or RCS. This revolutionary technology allows a fifth-generation aircraft such as the F-22 Raptor with a max takeoff weight of 83,500 pounds to have a radar cross-section of just 0 0.0001 meters squared, about the size of a bumblebee. Oh, wow. What's more insane is that the massive B-2 bomber also has the same radar cross-section as the F-22 Raptor. Thus, it becomes extremely difficult to track stealth aircraft. Even if the enemy spots them on their radar scopes, it's a whole other story to successfully track them and register a missile kill. The whole idea behind this technology is to break the chain in which a conventional surface-to-air missile defense system works. It's the same reason countries like China and Russia are also hard at developing their own stealth fighter, the Chengdu J-20, and the Sukhoi Su-57, respectively. These aircraft would allow the US Air Force to assert its air superiority over any battlefield of the future. And yeah. we all know that control of these skies is the biggest decider in any war. The next reason why any country going to war with the US military should think twice is because of the strength of the US Navy Whoa. and its dominance over the world's wow. ocean, especially the thing? Navy's supercarriers. The U.S. Navy currently operates 11 nuclear-powered Nimitz-class supercarriers, which is the largest aircraft carrier fleet in the world. Okay. The only Navy that can come close in terms of technological advancement is probably the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom, but they only have two operational carriers. 
The Nimitz class of carriers has a displacement of over 100,000 tons and can carry a complement of up to 70 aircraft. They're literally wow. a floating small town in the ocean yeah. with its own <laughs> airport. The Nimitz class carriers in themselves are extremely potent offensive weapons, but the way they operate in what is called the carrier strike groups makes these ships even more deadly. A carrier seldom deploys alone. There are always a fleet of surface and underwater assets surrounding them and forming a strike group. Like a whole army of These include ocean. Yeah. guided missile cruisers, a destroyer squadron, attack submarines, and other support vessels. Oh Together, man. They project the power of the carrier and at the center of the group forward towards the enemy. While the carrier is carrying out its offensive role with the use of its air wing, the other ships are responsible to protect its flanks against yeah. any enemy attack. This combination of offensive and defensive strategy makes the U.S. carrier strike group almost impenetrable. Wow. The United States Navy maintains nine such carrier strike groups, eight of which are based in the United States and one that's forward deployed to Japan. For over 50 years, this has been the principal element of U.S. power protection, and the Nimitz class of supercarriers are at the center of it all. Despite this, the U.S. is currently in the process of developing a new class of carriers called the Gerald R. Ford class, intended to replace the Nimitz class ships. This new supercarrier will be even more technologically Whoa. advanced and is expected to continue U.S. dominance of the oceans well into the late 21st century. Oh my goodness! The third reason why you shouldn't fight the U.S. military is their massive stockpile of nuclear and conventional intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs. The ICBM plays the role of the land leg in the U.S. nuclear triad, along with the Trident submarine-launched ballistic oh, missile underwater? SLBM submarine? and nuclear warheads carried wow. by long-range strategic bombers. ICBMs are launched from ground-based missile silos, achieving high suborbital spaceflight, approximately 1,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. The body of the missile then separates from the warhead, which re-enters the atmosphere and free falls to the assigned target at hypersonic speeds. Okay. The USA currently operates 400 ICBMs from its base in Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota. The LGM 30G Minuteman III is the only type of ICBM that is currently operational in the U.S. The Minuteman III family of ICBMs were first developed in the 1960s as a response to the Soviet nuclear threat. Throughout the Cold War and beyond, these missiles have undergone constant modernization. In the last decade alone, the U.S. Can military has undertaken on $7 billion dollars worth of upgrades. <laughs> the rocket propulsion engines, the propellants used, the guidance system, and even the flight control surfaces have all been refurbished. The upgraded missiles are completely different from its 1960s counterparts, except for the shell. These state-of-the-art improvements and modernization programs have kept the Minuteman 3 system like operational rocket. for over like, 50 years with the improved moon. reliability that supports the missile's remarkable 99% alert rate. It's like a small building the latest versions the of the missiles have a range of over 8,000 miles, which is greater Whoa. than the diameter of the Earth at 7,917 miles. Whoa, they can go all the way around the world. They can carry multiple 340 yeah, kiloton nuclear warheads, which is 20 times greater than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Not only that, each of these warheads can be assigned to different targets independently. The technology is called Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicle, or MIRV, oh, and was first developed for the Minuteman III family of missiles. So any country messing with the United States will have to deal with this awesome arsenal of firepower, which can be launched at a moment's notice. If you weren't the ICBMs or the stealth fighters raining fire down on you, it would be precision-guided munitions, or better known as smart bombs or PGMs instead. This is another big reason why not messing with the U.S. military is a good idea. Very good idea. All branches <laughs> of the U.S. military use smart bombs in some forms or the other. These weapon systems are designed to be precise and hit a specific target with maximum efficiency. These bombs are so effective that during the first Gulf War, PGMs comprised only 9% of weapons fired, but accounted for 75% of all successful hits. Wow. Since then, for the US military at least, the days of normal artillery shells and unguided bombs are long gone. Nowadays, the military uses PGMs from air, ground, and sea. Wow. Precision guided munitions come in various forms and use different kinds of technologies to achieve precise hits. 
a large majority of PGMs use the Global Positioning System, or GPS, of satellites to guide their trajectory to target. However, sometimes this becomes a problem, as GPS coverage is not always reliably available everywhere across the globe, or bad weather conditions can hinder operations. Thus, the Office of Naval Research, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, and the Army Research Laboratory have all coordinated to develop the first ever artillery-fired smart munition that will not use GPS guidance. The project is known as Moving Target Artillery Round, or MTAR for short. The MTAR shell can be guided onto stationary as well as moving targets in both land and sea, using a combination of guidance technology. The best part oh, is that yeah. these shells can be fired from the existing M777A2 155mm towed howitzer and the M109A7 Paladin Integrated Management self-propelled 155mm artillery systems already in use by the US military. The shells oh will also feature an extended range of 40 to 60 miles using rocket boosters to propel them. Just don't even bother out. I'm just like, it don't even try. US like, don't, don't, don't even knock on American doors. <laughs> that outclasses <laughs> others around the world. <laughs> Lastly, the fifth and final reason why soldiers fight the US military is drones. All the drones. We're all familiar with what an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone yeah. is and what it's supposed to do. But in recent years, the usability of UAVs are steadily increasing yeah, to encompass no all there. spheres of military operations, and the US military is the pioneering spirit behind it. At first, used only for surveillance missions, drones were quickly weaponized after the 9-11 attacks and have been extensively used by the US military in the war against terror as an offensive weapon platform. It's forecasted that over the next decades, the US is in line to purchase over 1,000 combat drones of various classifications. Wow. Some of them, like the Lockheed Martin RQ-170 Sentinel and the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray, they look like UFOs. are in yeah, the final do. stages of development and once finished, will provide the US military with state-of-the-art platforms capable of multi-role operations, ranging from attack missions to aerial refueling. Drone technology has reached such heights today that a single UAV can loiter miles above the surface of the Earth for hours, waiting for the target to show its head and sticking with impunity. Wow. This capability will allow all the services under the US military to reduce its dependency on manned platforms, thereby reducing the risks during future combat operations. These five weapon systems make the US military extremely oh goodness, dangerous wow. for any adversary looking to get into a conflict with them. In a conventional warfare setting, it's almost impossible to beat the US military cool. machine. That's why modern enemies of the United States are employing more and more asymmetric warfare strategies against the mighty US military. Despite that, the US military juggernaut is hand down the most powerful military complex in the world today, and probably will be for decades to come. That's all we have for you today, folks. Oh Thanks man, for sticking I think I just took my first breath. As I know. Video. <laughs> and want to stay up to date on cool military stuff wow. like this, then click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell. And you'll be the first. I think we should definitely sub to them. Please tell me that we're friends with America. I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think we She's are. Like, we're, we're, we're friends, we're right? Friends, hey, we guys. like we like you guys. Wait, if we went into war, would we be in the same? Yeah, we're, no, we're on America's side. Yeah. Yeah, they, and if we got into war, they would hopefully protect us. Pretty sure they would. Hey guys. Please. Yeah. Hey, you would, eh? We love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's scared? <laughs> I'm not scared. That makes me feel better because yeah. they're on our side. But something that really entered my mind during that video was like the technology that was on display there. Mm. Like we think that these smartphones and stuff like that are like the pinnacle of our technology or mm. you know, other little smart devices that we have, but it's just, it's so like old compared to what they're, they're on a they new have. Level. Yeah, like they can like pinpoint on your face from like space and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's crazy. I know, the level of technology that the military is it's dealing with. It's kind of scary technology. Now I'm gonna yeah. walk around now just going like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does nothing, they can probably see through your hands. Yeah, <laughs> x-ray, <Yeah. laughs> x-ray from space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. And also another thing they didn't really mention was the cost. Like I wonder oh, how. I know. And who pays for it? Like one missile. I wonder how much that costs. Or like yeah. one of those jets or one of those drones. Like man, that's like billions. You know, um, because we don't really have an army here. Don't tell anyone. No, we have an army. We don't have much of like a an air force. Well, we don't have a lot of defense. No, we don't have much defense. Yeah. Shh. It's a secret. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. But, <laughs> don't, don't tell the baddies. Yeah. <laughs> but who pays for the army? 
Is it taxpayer uh, money? Yeah, or I think they, yeah, they just have like a budget that they put each year towards military. So that's tax tax dollars. Yeah, but okay. also uh, another thing that I was going to say was I think that the the reason, like one of the reasons that you try and drive that whole like you know guided missile and smart bomb technology is it means that you don't have to have guys on the ground running in and doing all the shooting and fighting. Also, you don't have collateral. Yeah, yeah, and less collateral. Yeah, yeah. less so civilian deaths. Do you know what so. collateral is? Like unintentional death. So they're getting to the target yeah. of, you know, what they need. So if there was like a baddie in a building and they shot the baddie in the building, but then next door there was like some people, just normal yeah. people who weren't baddies. Civilians. And they, they died from that explosion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, they, so they're trying not to hurt civilians, but to take out the actual enemy. So they want to get rid of that happening. Yeah. So that's why you push for it. And also it means that you don't lose as many of your own soldiers as well. You don't, well, have, yeah. to put, you don't have to put human lives in danger yeah. of your, from, your, from your own side either. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone was just friends? Because, yeah, I just, mean, we're all humans. Out. We're all humans. Like, everyone just chilled out and watched your New Zealand family on YouTube. Exactly. Together. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just all be friends. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for that reaction. We have many more to come, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we you... may delay our trip to America, knowing all of that. <laughs> uh, we're probably safer there than, than we are here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so if you like that one, guys, please smash the like button. Comment down below. Comment down below. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. <laughs> He's like Follow us on Instagram and subscribe if you want to see more. We'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.